June 1907, my wife, our daughter Kitty, and I sailed for Europe. My wife insisted on going on a large ship, fashionable at the time. It was impossible to escape the Nouveau Riche. Ye gods. By the third day out, I could stand it no longer. I had to get away. I walked as far forward as possible. Coming to the end of the deck, I stood alone, looking down. There were men, women, and children on the lower levels of the steerage. The scene fascinated me. A round straw hat. The funnel leaning left. The stairway leaning right. White suspenders crossed on the back of a man below. A mass that cut into the sky, completing a triangle. I saw shapes related to one another, a picture of shapes, and underlying it, a new vision that held me. I raced to the main stairway of the steamer, chased down into my cabin, picked up my Graflex, raced back again, worrying whether or not the man with the straw hat had shifted his position. If he had, the picture I saw would no longer exist. The man with the straw hat had not stirred an inch. The man in the cross suspenders, he too stood where he had been talking. No one had moved. I had only one plate holder with one unexposed plate. I released the shutter, my heart thumping. based on related shapes and deepest human feeling. A step in my own evolution. Now the people tell me that I will when I'm in heaven, for instance, when I'm not on this earth anymore, people will remember that picture. Oh, this is the photographer who took that picture of VJ Day. 15th of August, 1945. I was sent down to the Times Square region. And I was very lucky because I found this man starting from this building, grabbing any and every girl in sight, whether she was a grandmother, whether she was a stout, thin, old, thick, thin, doesn't make any difference. And I looked, was running ahead of him with my little Leica, looking over my shoulder like this, but never pleased, pleased me. Everything was cocked, everything was a fixed focus, you know, about 10 or 15 feet away. Until I saw a flash of a second, something white being grabbed. And I turned around and photographed him, photographed, photographed him kissing that girl. If this girl would have been dressed in dark, it would never have been a picture. If the sailor would have had a white uniform, it would never, never made a picture. Now, I want to show you the interesting thing. I took exactly four pictures. And this is a picture I picked because that pleased me best. It was done within a few seconds, but four or five seconds. We were still kissing the girl. Why did this particular picture please you more than the other? On account of composition. Uh, you see, when, when you look, it is, it is best, for my eyes, bestly balanced. You see some white. See, this man doesn't look good. He is too tall. He takes the emphasis away from this picture. He is just right. He's too tall again. He has nothing. You see, this this is the best. You see, if this man, if this sailor would have been here, wouldn't have been good. Too much white. She's standing out. This is the best picture of all. It pleases me best. Garbo came in off the set. The director says, now you have only five minutes. 
I said, all right. So I had a kitchen chair there for her to sit on. I draped my black frequency cloth over the back. I asked her to sit on that chair. She sat on the chair, and like a good sport, she straddled the chair, leaned her arm on the back, facing me. And then I started my photograph, and I was getting... She would turn her head this way and shake her head in this way. And I was, this wasn't the Garbo that I was interested in. This was the regular Hollywood Garbo. So I said, it's too bad we have to photograph all these things with the hairdo that you wear, the thing, this Hollywood hairdo. She said, oh, this hair. Put her hand up to her head and brushed them back. And I said, Greta, now let's make a photograph of that. The good sport again that she was, she went into it, and uh, those are the only pictures I have ever used of Greta Garbo. One of my first pictures with a Leica on a tripod, a gala evening at La Scala in Milan. Now this is a, it's a nice picture, but I was looking for some specific thing. Because this is not, this is a pleasing picture, but it's not the picture. And uh, I spied from somewhere here, as you see, an empty box besides that. But you have to have it in your head. And this is, was for years and years and years still is one of my wise pictures of that lovely, lovely young society girl at the premiere at La Scala in Milan. Without that girl, if you take this away, it's no picture at all. People have asked me, how did you expose? I don't know, but probably at least half a second, at least, on a very un unsturdy tripod. In the early 1940s, a young photographer, Gordon Parks, got a call to come to Washington. With the success of the FSA, its role was being expanded. Roy Stryker believed that photographs could be used to combat racial discrimination. He began by showing Parks how things really worked on the streets of the nation's capital. So Roy Stryker asked me a few questions and said, what do you, you know, really know about the city? And I told him, he said, hmm. He said, well, I'm going to give you an assignment, your first assignment. Put your camera on the shelf. I want you to go to Julius Garfinkel store, buy yourself a top coat. There's a restaurant directly across the street, and then there's a motion picture house down this, in the same block. So to make the story short, each one of them gave me short shrift. I, uh, I didn't get a coat at, at the department store. When I went to the restaurant, the man said, don't you know a nigger can get in the movie house? That's the way it was. So I was astounded. And I went back, and Roy saw me walk in, and he smiled. He said, well, how did it go? <laughs> I said, well, I think you know how it went. He said, yeah, what are you going to do about it? I said, I don't know. What do I do about it? He said, well, what did you bring your camera down here for? Just like that. I said, oh. So he left, and the only person left in the building was a black woman, a charwoman, who was sweeping the floor and mopping. So I introduced myself. She told me her name was Ella Watson, and I asked her if I could photograph her. Photograph me like this? I said, yes. I had really thought of Grant Wood's picture of the American Gothic. I put a broom in one hand, and a mop on the other, and told her to look directly into the camera. And that picture is an indictment against America. And I realized uh, from the reaction of people that the camera could be a, a, a very powerful instrument against discrimination, against poverty, against racism. Thank you.